Thank you, Nick. Um, so this session will focus on professional development and how to improve over the summer. We plan to tackle it sort of in two buckets. The first part of the conversation will be professional development during summer internships. And then the second part is professional development without summer internships. So hopefully this will cover everyone on this call. So we'll get right to it. Um, I will turn it over to Steph. She'll introduce herself as our guest moderator and she will introduce the panelists. So welcome. How's it going, everybody? Uh, thanks for welcoming me into tonight's session. Um, my name is Steph Abello. I am the manager of marketing and fan engagement at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Um, I This is my first full-time marketing position. So not too long ago, I was in the same shoes as a lot of you. Um, just finished my master's last year. So i um, really just starting to get going in the industry and have had a lot of fun um, in this committee and as a part of NACMA, so welcome. Um, we got our two panelists tonight are Jessica Dorsey and uh, David Malay. So I'll let them go ahead and introduce themselves and tell you guys about them. Awesome. Uh, Jessica, I guess I'll go first and then pass it over to you. Um, so, hey, everybody, my name is David Malay. Uh, I have a unique role in the industry in that I am on one of the, like, kind of the third party side of the space. So I don't actually work for a specific university. But I work or a, or a pro team or any, uh, an actual league, uh, but I work hand in hand with all those people. So my role and background, uh, graduated from university and went down and worked at Disney Institute for about six years, helping sports teams all over the world adapt and apply Disney best practices, especially when it comes to like leadership, culture, customer service. Then I started my own company almost six years ago now doing a similar thing, uh, consulting, consulting sports teams of all sizes on fandom and customer experience. Um, so really excited to jump in with you guys. Uh, I have a big passion for giving back and, and helping people like yourselves kind of navigate the industry because sometimes it's a good old boys club and it's hard to break in. Um, so really trying to help as much as I can. I'm an open book. Ask us anything as we get going. Absolutely. That's a wonderful introduction, David. Now I got to follow that up. Um, I'm Jessica Dorsey. I'm the Associate AD at DePaul University. I've been here about a year and a half. I actually started my career um, at the Division II level for about five to six years. So I've been at schools, um, West Coast, Midwest, um, zero, budget, zero budget, big budget, non-football schools, football schools, um, all in marketing. So I have a diverse background and how I transitioned throughout my journey and got to where I'm at currently. I have a big passion for marketing um, as well as giving back. Um, when I went through the industry, nobody helped me. Uh, so for me, I made it a point to give all my knowledge, all my experience to anybody who asks for it, who wants it. So that's a big passion of mine. So being here today, glad I was invited and I'm ready to give you all the knowledge that I have. Awesome, thanks, Jessica and um, David. So we'll start kind of with David. Let's just open it up with, how would you suggest maximizing your summer internship? Um, I, think it, I think it really starts with having specific goals with your internship, right? So that could be a number of different things. You might be in a situation where you go in and you know that there's not gonna be a job there afterwards. Right. So at that point, you got to readjust your goals. It's not about getting a job. It's about learning as much as possible. It's about networking as much as possible. If you go in there and there is an opportunity to maybe beat out some other interns for a full time role, work your tail off and, and go for that if that's what you want to do. So I think what it really comes down to is setting specific goals and then running after those goals really hard. Again, whether they be to meet and network with as many people as you can whether that be to learn as many skills as you possibly can, or whether that be to get a full-time job there. That would be my, my intro starter to that question. Jessica, what do you think? You hit everything that I was going to say, like really is having a goal. What is the purpose of you actually getting this internship? What do you want to get out of it? And how, what's your best path to do that? Um, a lot of times certain internships are for specific things. They want you to come in. They want you to develop and do everything they need to do for the kids club. Uh, summer is uh, interesting depending on where your internship is. You might be helping working on ticket stuff because that's renewal season for football if you're going to a school that has a 
internship with football, or if you go to a school that doesn't, you might be working summer orientations, um, community events, caravans uh, for coaches. So really understand one, what you wanna get out of your summer because that should dictate where you're looking for internships to meet those goals that you do have. I'll, I'll hook into that and just add one more thing to what Jessica is talking about. Be as specific as possible in those goals. Like do not just be saying, oh, my goal is to learn more skills. What specific skills? Right. Even if they're not in what you're actively doing, let's say you want to get better at marketing, but you're in event ops. OK, go seek out as many people on that marketing side or figure out how event ops plays into marketing and learn more about that specifically. Right. A lot of you have probably heard the framework of smart goals, right? Specific, measurable, actionable. What's the R stand for? Uh, somebody give me. I don't know. That's what the same attention, but I don't think that's uh, right. realistic that's or reasonable. Realistic, <laughs> realistic goals. Yep. Um, so look up that framework, right? And set your goals accordingly. Be really, really specific on those goals and go after them. Like it's like going to the gym and losing weight. If you if your goal is just to lose weight, you're not going to lose the weight. You got to set it up more specifically. Like my goal is to actively go to the gym every single day, right? For 30 minutes. And these are the exercises I'm going to do. Same thing. If your goal is to network, say, Hey, every day I'm going to, my goal is to meet someone new, or I'm never going to have lunch alone. Right? Like those are some really specific things that I think you can do to set yourself up for success when you're tackling your goals. Absolutely. I think that you guys speaking to that intentionality behind everything is so important because um, internships really turn out to be whatever you make of them in any situation. Um, so when you're actually in the internship, you're in the works, what are some of the must do's, whether it's from when you were an intern or impressions that other interns have made on you? What are some of the biggest must do's, must hits? Yeah. I'd probably say when I had my internship, one thing that I made a point to do is find something they don't have. So at my first internship, I actually proposed a kids club to my boss at that time. And my boss actually hated kids club. He didn't want one, was not into it, but I, he said, if you want to propose it to me. So I put together, I researched other schools that had it, why they had it, what their numbers were. Uh, I proposed it, I designed a t-shirt. This is what it's gonna cost. Um, and I actually sold him on a kids club and now they still have that kids club to this day. And now I have the opportunity for myself on a resume. I know how to develop and start a kids club. And for one, that taught me the skill of one, I have initiative. Two, I can have and add value to where I'm at. So really, in some, when you're in your internship, you have your, your goals that you have, you have your daily tasks, but really try to also find that piece of where you can add something because that makes a big impact. And like Dave said, if they do have that opportunity that there is an opening for a job, I'm going to be paying attention to that intern that came to me with a proposal that did the research and looking to advance us as a department. I think finding those opportunities is very, very valuable and it would be valuable for them, but also for you as well. I'm, I'm going to challenge Jessica a little bit here. Okay. Um, so she said something that is super key, which is add value. Right. And, but I don't always think it comes from addition and I, I'm just, I'm just adding extra, right. Sometimes it can come from sub subtraction, right? So when we're working with schools, right. To add value, it could come in one of two ways. You're bringing something new to the table, like she did with the kids club, which is huge and awesome. Sometimes though, in this, in, in a summer internship, you're not going to have the autonomy or like the decision-making power to actually go execute on those ideas. And sometimes what you'll do is you'll bring a new idea to the table. That's great but it requires a ton of work from somebody else other than yourself, right? So the other way you can do it is by removing work from people. That's the other way you can kind of add value. Ooh. So if you're constantly looking at and saying, hey, this guy or this girl's got a ton of work on their plate. I got some extra free time on my hand. Let me go help that person take some, remove some of the workload for them. And that might come from physically helping them out or it might come from making a process more efficient, right? So I think, I think what Jessica hit on is like, Finding something that doesn't exist, adding a click kids club, huge. It's going to teach you so many new skills, like just creating something that that's where I tend to, I'm like you, uh, Jessica, I tend to add value that way. Like, I'm like, 
let me learn some new skills. Cause like by building, that's how I actually learn. Mm -hmm. Um, but if that, if you're, if you're stuck and you don't have any ideas, like just mm -hmm. go find, what are the pain points that my colleagues are going through the full-time people? What's like frustrating them. And let me see if I can make that easier for them. That might be another way. If you don't have the type of creativity in your wheel set or in your wheelhouse, yeah. um, to be able to go come up with a brand new idea. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that point for, um, as well, David, the efficiency point, everybody's always looking, how can we get more efficient? How can we make this better? Um, so if you can do it, however you can add it, they will be ecstatic and grateful for. hundred <laughs> percent. So you talk about adding value, kind of removing workloads. So if these folks are hired, let's say in the marketing department, but want to get experience in game operations or in ticket office or something, how do you best advise them being new, wanting to show 110% in that team and that field, but also kind of expand their wings and try other areas? Um, there, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Um, the What I will say with a summer internship is like, first and foremost, do your job really well. Like whatever tasks and things I, I've seen, we've had so many interns come through different programs that I've been involved with. And we, we, every one of us on this panel know it. We've all met that overachiever intern that helps everybody else, but doesn't do what they were actually assigned to do. And don't be that person. Uh, so do what you are assigned to do first and foremost, and knock that out of the park. From there, that's when your networking comes in and you, you're sitting and going to lunches with people. You're meeting as many new people as you can. And in those conversations, you will find ways to add value once you've completed your tasks really well. Um, and I would encourage you, like, I will say with a, with an internship, like I, I went into my internship when I first started working at Disney with the mindset of how do I make it so at the end of this internship, not only have they hired me, but I need an intern of my own, Right. And so we went into it with that of like, I was just constantly creating new things, helping other people with different things. And so I would say go down that route, but don't be afraid to work really hard, but you're going to have to nail your first things first. And then you can go help other people where, where they need help because everybody needs help. Absolutely. Um, I think to add to that is like you said, nail your, nail what you're supposed to be doing. And let's say we work seven days a week, depending on summer, it's a little less. If you know Monday through Friday and this weekend, you have Saturday and Sunday off, it, but you know there's an event. Building and having that relationship and networking before, like you had lunch with a, an event and facilities person, ask them, hey, I don't actually have any marketing responsibilities on Saturday. I would love to help you out on this one event that you have and kind of see what you do and you know, get a little bit more knowledge. So, once you completed what you're doing and you have those little opportunities, they're bound to come up to where you're like, oh, I'm done with everything. And we actually don't have anything to do this weekend. And I actually kind of have it off, but I don't have any plans. That's when you can like, oh, let's see my network and see if anybody else needs help that weekend or something, because there's something else going on. So then you can step out and kind of branch out to different departments that way. Yeah, I, th I think the other thing on that is like, in these departments, there genuinely are so many different functions to them that if you don't like what you're doing, there are other, that, that doesn't mean that sports is not for you, right? Like mm. it, it might be the case, but I would encourage you to try a bunch of those other things on your off time and really be proactive. Like this is, this is your time to grind and work as hard as you can and find as many different ways to learn about the industry as you possibly can think about the indirect compensation that you're getting with this and, and really try to maximize that. Absolutely. And I think that whole concept of just seeking out the opportunity yourself, um, while also owning whatever it is you're doing is just essential wherever you're at in any role. Um, kind of transitioning from being in the concept of, in the context of the internship itself, how do you guys as managers help prepare your team or people you supervise who are now going in to take on summer internships? What, what do you think um, young professionals can ask of their managers to help them prepare for their internships? I think one, sitting down and actually going over what the job description is for your internship. Having that conversation with your supervisor, to be like, here's what the internship is. 
Can you make, can you explain a little bit deeper about what this actually translates to working in the department? So you have a really, so they have a really true understanding of what's going to be asked of them and making sure they feel comfortable with everything that they're doing. Um, you got the internship, but it's also doing those things can sometimes not translate. So really I sit down with them and be like, what does this bullet mean to you and what they're asking of you? To make sure they have an understanding and try to help them a little bit more, see a little bit full of what their hiring manager might be also looking for. Because uh, we don't put everything on the description. We know what the words mean, but not everybody really truly understands what they mean. To really make sure they have a true understanding of what's being asked of them. And also going back to like David said earlier, it's goal setting. Having that conversation of like, what do you want to get out of this internship? What does that look like at the end? What do you want to be able to say? What do you want to be able to have done? Um, what's the purpose of it to really set those goals? Um, and also explain networking and building those relationships. What's it like? Sometimes, depending on the student, they might not have a lot of experience being in the office. They work games, they've done events, but being in office is a different experience. So having them understand the office and how that works and those dynamics is different than going to the game and being the student worker and running promos. So really giving that full scope of what they're gonna be doing. And in some instances, providing a mock setup of what that could be. If they're gonna be more in office, start to bring them in the office a little bit more so they understand of what that's gonna look like. So really just setting them up for the most successful internship that they can have. Um, is really what I try to do with my students. Yeah, I love that. Um, and that that kind of, that leads me into my point. I'll, I'll hook into it here. Um, so I, I, when I was at Disney, this was something that we taught and, and something now is my company. This is what we consult on as well. A lot of what we're hitting on is this concept that is the gap. So like, if you think about it here, like reality is here. Expectations are often here. And the problems happen in the middle, right? When our reality doesn't align with what expectations are or what our ex expectations of someone are don't align with what is actually happening, that is where problems happen. That applies to your, like your partner, your spouse, that applies in every facet of your life, no matter what you are. It's especially important when it comes to internships, right? What is your manager looking for in terms of their actual expectations versus what you think it is going in, right? And, and so sitting down and having all those conversations that Jessica talked about is, that's so key. You wanna close that gap. Constantly think about through your internship, like how do we close the gap between reality and expectations? And how do we constantly check in of what are the expectations? Am I actually hitting those expectations? And same thing if you're a manager, that's bringing in summer interns, like constantly be having those conversations of whether or not they are hitting those expectations that you have of them. Um, that would be, that's like a huge thing for me. I'll give one more thing that is huge. And I, this one, I will give this out with a little bit of caution. You kind of got to feel out your situation, but it's one of my favorite things for a new person coming into any organization. And that is thinking about it like you're creating a user manual for yourself. So think about a product that you've had, right? any product, they have a user manual that says you will get the most out of this product if you do X, Y, Z, right? This is how you care for it. This is how you turn it on. Same sort of thing, right? Like if you can, you don't have to prepare like a whole big thing, but if you can put down notes and if you're going into your internship and you sit down with your manager and you say, Hey, like I'm here to grind for you as hard as I can do what you need. That being said, this is what motivates me. This is how I best communicate. These are my strengths, right? If you sit down and you do those things, one, you're going to learn a lot by that self-reflection, but two, your manager will have a better idea. Got it. Don't put this guy, don't put David on this type of thing. Don't put David in organization. Let's put him in front of people, right? That's what someone would learn about me in, in my, uh, if I were to do one of these. Um, but yeah, I would say, I would encourage you to just jot some of those things down. Like if you were to make a user manual for yourself, what would that look like? What would you include in there? And then in those intro meetings, have those conversations and you can do the same thing if you're a manager that's hiring interns as well. Just talking about your leadership style. Awesome. That's awesome and great advice. Um, what we'll do is since the summer will look, the summer's winding down. So David, what do you recommend and Jess on 
keeping in touch? How do you stay in touch with these folks that you had quick kind of visits with over a you know, six, eight, 12 week period? Keeping in touch, that's always the <laughs> struggle sometimes. Um, I think one, once your internship is over, I always think of it as still like a job interview. You want to actually thank everybody that you met um, for one, you know, filling their cup and giving their knowledge to you and have given you that opportunity. But also sometimes um, I'm the type of person that sometimes I have to schedule things and be conscious of making sure I'm building those and keeping those connections. Um, follow them on social media. They work at a school, if they win a championship, if they're doing something cool, like, like it or be like, hey, that's awesome. Like really start to build that true relationship where it's not transactional, but you're following and you're keeping up. It doesn't have to be a full on phone call and email. It's really those quick touches because we're all always doing something. So just the entire, they just won a championship. They just sold out a game. Like, hey, that's awesome. You can even be like, how did you do that? You know, we've been trying to work on this. Um, and so it goes vice versa. If you're working on something, they might even reach out to you and be like, hey, I saw that you did this. How'd you do it? Like build that true relationship to where you're actually building that personal bond. Um, and make it intentional. Um, it can be little simple things that have to be a grand thing, um, but simple things. I still keep in touch with student workers from eight years ago. Do we talk all the time? Do we communicate? Nope. But I know where they're at. And if I see something that they're doing at school, I'm like, hey, that's awesome. Um, it goes a long way. It's, it's a genuine interaction. Um, I see them at convention. Um, if they win something, I'm always congratulating, like always in their corner. I think that's a way to build those genuine relationships, especially in sports where most of the time we know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. <laughs> um, uh, so you just never know. And just really just being genuine and actually get to know people because um, we all kind of do the same thing. We understand it and we get it. So sometimes that little note just like, that's awesome. You're like, thank you. <laughs> I was having a stressful day today, but that's awesome. They're really just being genuine. Yeah. I'll, I'll add into that. I'll share a couple of failures on this end. Mm. Uh, so my, I remember my first in summer internship that I had, I, I, this is before I wanted to get into sports. I thought I wanted to go into law and I had an internship. I don't Some of you guys may know this firm Morgan and Morgan. Uh, it's a massive, massive law firm. One of the biggest in the country. So this was 15 years ago, more than that. Uh, I literally had the office cubicle right outside John Morgan's office. I would watch YouTube videos with him on a regular basis because he was not doing any work. Everybody else was doing his work. <laughs> and I didn't want to go into law, so I didn't stay in touch with him. Now, again, 15 years later, I'm like, why? Why? What an idiot I was. Like, that's one of the most powerful lawyers in the entire country. And we had a great relationship. But because I didn't want to go in the industry, I stopped staying in touch. So I think to Jessica's point, like, you never know where people are going to be and you never know whether you're going to be working for them someday or they're going to be working alongside of you mm -hmm. or you just might want to go to a game at some point and like or or like you just never know where that person's going to be in the future or where you're going to be in the future and when you might need community to help you along that way so it's super important to stay in touch with people from this internship um Another, I'll give another failure. Um, I remember there was this one phone call I made. This was like to, this was, I was in sales at Disney at the beginning and I was like, just trying to stay in touch with people. And so do you guys know Fred Demarest over, he was at NC state for a long time. Uh, anyway, I remember like being, I didn't want to be that salesy sales guy. So I remember a phone call I made to him where literally for 30 minutes, all I did was like ask him about his family and try to catch up and be friends with him. And we, we had, we were friends already at that point but we weren't besties like to be spending 30 minutes during the middle of the day talking about kids. Don't do that either. That's too much. So to Jessica's point, right? Like the soft touches are usually better for us because we're all running around like crazy. Don't feel like you need to call people all the time and just say, Hey, I want to catch up. Like that's actually sometimes more annoying unless you're really close with the person, the little touches on social media, the, Hey, I saw this article and I'm thinking of you guys, or even, even going back to adding value, the concept that Jessica brought up at the very beginning of like, 
keep doing that after your internship, right? If you see something cool that you remember they didn't have during your time there and somebody else is doing it, be like, Hey, I saw this. I thought that you guys might be able to use this, like mm -hmm. test it out. Happy to jump on and brainstorm some ideas. You never know when that could be helpful too. Um, so I would say those are all like key things. I will tell you my biggest way for staying in touch with people right now that I've loved doing over the last couple of years. I literally will just send a note to someone when I think about them. And I try to do this at least to one person every single day. Uh, and I'm not successful with it, but I try at least every day. Um, and I'll just send a text that just says, Hey, don't know what you're working on, but hope you're crushing it. Like, let's go get it today. And oftentimes people will text me back and be like, I needed that this morning. Like, thank you. So you just never know where people are at. And that's simple. It's almost like cop a copy paste message that gets sent out. Like it's the same message that gets sent out more or less, but I send it out when I'm genuinely thinking of that person. So if they pop in your head, shoot them a text and just say, Hey, don't know what you're working on, but hope you're doing it well. And like, I'm rooting for you. I'm on your team. That goes a long, long, long way, much further than any kind of email with updates or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I would love getting that text. It would amp me up. I'd be going into the work day, no coffee needed, all ready to go. That's awesome. And um, I think the other thing is it's such good practice for networking in general. Um, I don't know how many people are planning on attending convention. We'll talk about that at the next um, NACMA Academy session. But um, it's just great practice to start talking to people you already know and have spent time with so that when you're starting to try and have those conversations with people you haven't met, it's something you've practiced a little bit already. So those are all great, great tidbits. Um, again, as you know, you're getting towards the end of the summer internship, et cetera, and a lot of people go right back into school. Um, what are your guys' suggestions for that? How they take that summer internship back into school with them? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I know. What, do you, what do you got, Jessica? <laughs> I'd probably say if you did a summer internship, like it depending, some people figure out they want to work in sports during the summer. So they actually didn't work for the athletic department when they were there. So I'd say if you did an internship and you're still interested and you haven't don't have a connection at your schools or at athletic department, reach out to somebody in the athletic department that you might be interested in working for or volunteering for. Um, let them know that your interest is working in sports. They might have student worker jobs open already. And then also if you currently are working in the athletic department and you come back, I would actually meet with your supervisor. Um, they might actually bring you into the office more, see that you have more skills that you, have, that you didn't have. You might actually become, depending on the structure, a student worker leader, a student marketing assistant and put yourself in a position to move up that structure of student workers at your institution as well. So I think it can go either way if you're getting into it or you've already been into it, like keep building those skills because if a student worker does an internship and comes back to me as their supervisor and say, I was able to do this at my summer internship, I would love to be able to do that here. Um, if I'm not, how can I be more involved? Um, so put yourself in a position to continue to develop your skills and build those connections. Um, I think having that conversation when you get back to campus with your supervisor, I think is definitely a key to continue your journey and in being involved in sports. That's a great answer. Um, Jessica's answer is really good, <laughs> especially on the logistics side. So I'm going to go totally different route and just add value in a different direction on this. Um, so I, what I'll say, this is where one of my hot takes is going to come guys. Uh, I, I think most grad schools or most undergrad schools in sports business specifically are in a really tough place because there are so many people trying to get these entry level jobs. And because you're all graduating with the same degree, it's really tough to stand out by just going back to school and doing school well. So like, I know for me, I learned 10x what I learned in a year in my summer intern, or it wasn't a summer internship, it was a full year internship at Disney. I learned 10 times more in that full year at Disney than I did in my four years of, of school at, at, uh, in college. And so 
for me, it's like, I think you're going to be really challenged where you're going to go back into this learning environment that's a really theoretical and, and might not be up to date because of how quick the industry is changing right now. And you're going to be going back to that environment from the fast paced reality of working actual job in the, in an athletic department or with a pro team or whatever it might be. So what I would challenge you to do is don't settle for your only learning coming from the textbook and your course curriculums. Like when you go back to campus, like try to try to see how you can stay involved with people. Maybe there's a side project that you can help with, with the school or the team that you just left, right? Maybe there's a side project that's research or something or other that you can do remotely throughout the, the whole year, right? And that's just one of those things that's gonna keep you tied to them. It's gonna keep you with a foot in the industry. What one, one tactical advice that I might do to like combine networking in that is where Jessica was talking about with her kids club, where she went and researched other schools, find a project like that, that your school or your team that you're doing the summer internship with doesn't have. When you go back to school, tell them, hey, I'd love to research this project give you an excuse to call every school or every other team and say, Hey, what are you doing now? You're networking and learning and you're doing it completely remote back at home. You don't have to get paid for it. Like that's, this is one of those things where it's like, that's to keep you, that's the advantage of keeping you in the, in the industry when you're going back to school, if you're doing a ton of work, that's another thing we can talk about the whole pay and, and what the legalities of that are. But if there's something that you can do volunteer wise, to keep you in the industry, keep you networking, go for it. Awesome. So we have a question in the chat. So we're going to throw this out um, to both you, David and Jess. So we have somebody that has asked, I've worked in the sports industry for a number of years and stuck at where I currently am at. Do you have advice, tools, contacts I can speak with or ways to overcome these challenges? So David, I'll start with you and then Jess, love to hear your thoughts. Um, yeah, I mean, my first thing would be there are probably a number of limiting reasons or, or beliefs as to why that you're stuck, whether from external and from internal. So I don't, I don't think it would be fair to give one answer to this. Uh, I think there's a lot of nuance to that question. Um, you, you might, you might actually have to be in, you might be stuck where you are because you, you can't go outside of this current city that you're in because of personal reasons. Right. Um, I, I don't know all that information. Uh, if you are active and ready to move and, and there's nothing holding you back from that, I'm going to try to tackle that question from, from that way. Um, the best way that I would, so when I was at Disney, we created this thing called Disney young professionals and, uh, I basically had gotten promoted and was a salaried leader. And I was now leading people that I had done internships with. And that were my friends I used to go out with. And now I'm, I'm kind of leading them. So I had to figure out how to ship that. So I created this group of Disney young professionals. Um, and it grew to be this massive, massive group while at Disney. Um, but one of the things that we realized in networking, right? Because a lot of times you might be networking, trying to get into a new role Networking in the traditional sense will build personal trust, but it doesn't necessarily build professional trust, right? Like I like Jessica. She's really nice. I've actually never worked with her though. So for me to recommend her to get a job would be really tough because I don't know if she's good at hitting deadlines. I don't know if she's organized. I don't know if she's good with people. I know I like her, but I've never worked with her. And so I think that is a challenge when you're trying to network and get somewhere else is that you might build personal trust but you haven't built professional trust with someone else. So that's where I would encourage you to get involved in NACTA in some way, shape or form, right? Because that's how you, that's one way that you can build professional trust. Um, get involved in some of those volunteer things on the side that the industry is having. People can see your skills on display because they're working side by side with you. So that would be like one of the, like the primary ways and primary suggestions and one of the roadblocks I think often stops us from getting new roles. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of David, like there, there's definitely a lot of reasons of not being able to get that next job. Um, I think from my perspective, it would be kind of more into what David would say. It's like building those things. I know NACTA, NACMA is a strong community. Um, we want to have mentor mentees where you can one meet individuals who are. To 
in some ways a little bit higher, more years in the industry, but also peers of yours um, because the way that our industry works, who may be your peers today, could be your supervisor tomorrow and being able to build those relationships. Um, I think as far as tools is to continue to grow your skill sets. Um, I think if you don't have that strong network professionally there, it's gonna a lot of the jobs that you might be applying for uh, could be just based off of your merits meeting what they see. They don't know you personally or professionally. They're looking at a piece of paper. Uh, so being able to put everything, your best foot forward on what your cover letter and resume looks like, I think um, could be not knowing what yours look like. Um, so I think for this question, it's more giving overarching um, without personally knowing you and sitting down and having all those conversations, um, but grow those skills. If you know the next position that you want, look at that job description. If there's something on there that you see like, ah, maybe that's that one skill that all of these people are looking for, but I'm not strong enough in it. Hone in on that and get more knowledge and be like, I know this. So then it's like, okay, I have these points, I'm hitting these things. Um, so that might be a tool as well. Yeah, I'll also, I'll also, also add in, if you're just applying through like the normal channels, there's not a high likelihood that you're gonna get it. I mean, I, I mean, I would ask the rest of us on the panelists. I mean, most of the jobs we've probably gotten have not come from just the normal, oh, there's a job on uh, work in sports or teamwork online. Let me just go hit apply. Like most of it is because we have been tapped or we've made relationships. We've seen that opening and then we've slid into DMs or we've asked someone to make an introduction to the hiring manager, right? So that's where it all comes in. I mean, there's so many creative ways to network now too. Like if you wanted to on Twitter every day, you could just pick a school or pick someone and be like, Hey, I'm highlighting Nicole today because she does really cool stuff and mm -hmm. do that for every day. Like Nicole might not know who you are, but she will when you tweet about her. And so there's, there's so many ways you don't have to wait till NACTA to network, right? Like you can do it. You can, it just takes initiative though. And not saying you haven't put in that initiative, but without having full context, those are some suggestions. Yeah. And I'm going to challenge you on this one. Yes. I mean, said anybody on the panel, actually, I've, all the jobs that I've ever gotten has been from applying. So well done. Well done. You've, de you've, <laughs> you've defied, you've defied the odds. You know, it does work. Well done. Um, so that's when I brought up, like the first thing they see is your cover letter and your resume. So I've worked really hard <laughs> on yeah. that and like pinpointing and making sure I'm hitting every point that they're looking for. Um, like I said, at the beginning of my career, nobody was helping me. So I was just <laughs> doing what I figured out. Like I did in my whole life, figuring things out and being like, I guess this is right. Maybe possibly uh, trial and error, but it is possible. Um, so I don't know the life of being tapped for things. Maybe it's, it's easier, but yep. from my standpoint, um, it does work. I can say it will take a lot of applications, uh, a lot of rejections. Um, I have a folder of mine, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I always say I will get the job that is meant for me and it's worked out thus far. So. Yeah, it's, 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 de it's definitely, definitely the harder, harder route physically and emotionally, but not all of us are, are privileged enough to be in different settings that we've been in. So, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of different routes you can go on this Absolutely. one. I'm definitely in both camps in this little debate. Um, I've gotten interviews because of my cover letter and then my current job I got because of a LinkedIn DM. So, you know, <laughs> Honestly, when in doubt, do it all, I guess, would be shoot, my shoot, shoot your shot either which way, whatever yeah, that shot exactly. looks like. Exactly. So, I was going to say, um, I'm sorry, Steph, I was going to say, I don't know if everyone saw in the sports news, uh, Nicole Lynn, the the sports agent, um, she's got Jalen Hurts as her client. And it's been all over today and yesterday that that relationship started because she slid into his DMs and said, hey, I don't know if you have an agent yet, but I'd love to love to work with you. So definitely agree with everything they're saying. There's a hundred different ways to go about it, especially in today's world with social media. <laughs> I, yeah. And I mean, the other thing on that too, is like all of us up here, like all of us will, I'm, I'm speaking for everybody. Maybe I'll just speak for myself. I will gladly accept your LinkedIn connections or whatever. Uh, and, and happy to connect. Um, so yeah.
yeah, happy to do that, however. Awesome. Um, we've got a couple more questions in the chat. Um, Mitchell asked, I've been told it's not what you know, it's who you know. How true is that as I'm starting graduating, I'm graduating in December and starting to look for jobs? Jessica, you give your take. I, I could go either way on this one. Uh, I, I, so can I. Like okay. I, this has been a saying, I heard that when I was starting. Um, but I think for me, I, for me, this, through my journey, this was never true because if that was the case, I wouldn't have taken the journey that I've gotten. And I think if you really just lean into the, it's only who I know, it's only who I know, then you'll really put in this effort of making transactional networking connections because you're like, oh, I just need to know all these, have these connections because that's how I'm going to get a job. I think still going and then having those genuine connections, but also you have to put in the work um, because I'm personally, I'm not going to recommend, vouch for just anybody. Uh, so I think a part of that is it's what you know and sometimes who you know. I think the key is don't forget the part about what you know because I'm going, somebody can recommend somebody but I'm still gonna look at your resume and if you don't know what I need you to know, you're not gonna get very far. Um, that's just my stance. So it's really, it is what you know. And sometimes it could be who you know. Um, at that same point, I think it becomes a little bit more about who you know sometimes. In some instances, the higher you get. Um, I think in the higher senior levels, it's definitely gonna be more of who you know in some instances because you've been around for so long by that point <laughs> that people know you, they work with you. Um, and then at some points like the 80 level, it's search firms. So that I think it's the who you know part is the higher you get. I think coming into the industry, like an assistant director or marketing assistant necessarily, me speaking as a hiring manager now, somebody could recommend you, but I'm not necessarily stressing out about who do they know who do they know I want to I'm wanting in that position I need somebody that knows the basics of what we're doing and they can grow upon that um so I think what you graduating in December I think you really need to be spot on on what you know um I think that would be beneficial for you um from that standpoint it, I would be more focused on what do you know? Can you go to an interview and speak on what you know? <laughs> because if you're like, oh, I had a friend, they recommended me and you go into the interview and I'm asking you, do you know how to do a marketing plan? Have you worked this? And you're just like, not really. I'm gonna be like, all right, <laughs> you know this person, I know them, but you don't know what I need you to know. So that doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, that's a great answer. Uh, I think it, what you said was really interesting, which is I do think when you are they're they're important at both phases, but I, I will say probably that very entry level is probably more what do you know or that first mm -hmm. couple levels, what do you know? Uh, and then as it gets higher, it, it definitely is who do you know in some of some of those instances. Um I'll I'll share I'll share a Disney insight here from this. Um my my dad was an exec there for 20 years. Uh, if you ever played sports at ESPN wide world of sports, my dad was the longest tenured executive there. Um, and before that he's like in the sports commission hall of fame, he kind of created the coined the term sports tourism. Um, so he was really, really, really good at his job at Disney for 20 years. He had one job though, because he was really, he knew a lot in that role and he did not care about anything else. And he made that very apparent that he didn't care about knowing other knowing everybody else. Uh, he knew everybody in the sports industry, but he didn't care about bouncing around and getting promoted at Disney. He cared about doing his job really well. It did mean though that for 20 years, he had literally the same role and he was an exec. So it was great. Uh, we were really blessed as kids, but he had the same role for 20 years because he didn't care about getting to know the other areas. Right. Um, now flip that. You have a lot of people at Disney that really just care about climbing the corporate ladder 
And you'll look at their resume and see that they've never been anywhere for longer than two years, because if they were to stay longer than two years anywhere, people would realize that they were just BS artists and they weren't actually any good at their job. They're really good at making it look like and taking credit for other people's work and making it look like they were good. They were really good at climbing the corporate ladder. They knew a lot of people, but they didn't actually know that much. And I wouldn't want someone like that on my team. Um, but that's not to say that so there, there's different ways about going about it. I think you do need a little bit of both to be really successful. I think if you index to one side, it, your reputation will happen accordingly. Uh, but I think they're both important equally. I don't think one is... I don't necessarily think one is more important than the other. If I did, I would lean toward Jessica's side of be really good at your job. Yeah, I'll just, sorry, I'll just add in a little bit here as well. Um, and if you've been on an earlier session throughout the year, you probably heard me say this already, but, and I can't take credit for this, but um, someone else told me it's not what you know, or it's not who you know, it's who knows you. So in this whole process, we've talked about like, how do you stay in touch? What are must do's build those genuine relationships. We kept saying um, that'll make it easier to stay in touch when you are leaving or when you have left. And then as we keep going on and you're go applying for other jobs, it's who knows you. Um, but then like Jess said, like she may get someone who is recommended to her. That person can get you in the door, but then it goes back to what, you know. Um, so yeah, I think it, it's definitely both. Uh, you got to be good at what you do, interested in what you do. Um, and yeah, be able to add value, as I said earlier. People could know you and not like you. <laughs> That's true too. Yeah. People can say things. And also like when Nick is like, you know, who knows you? I think that also ties into like, why do they know you? I think that's a key point too. For um, sure. Because except they could not like you or they could speak about your work ethic. Um, so that goes to the point of it's what you know and how you perform your job duties at the same time. Um, so it's a mix of both. It's not one or the other. As David mentioned, it's it's all complicated and colluded. <laughs> What else you guys got for us? Yeah, no, great points. Um, another question CJ asked, um, David, you touched on a full year internship. Do you recommend finding a useful full year postgraduate internship after undergrad or finding an entry level job first? What does that process look like? I, I would ask a secondary question to the rest of us here. Like, how do you differentiate the two of those? Like, do you see those two any different? Well, I think some, and what you hear and stuff, just mm -hmm. kind of jump in here. I think what in the college landscape, a lot of folks will say, either go get a postgrad, go get an internship, but try not to pay, obviously, for your postgrad if you can help, because it's so, there's so many out there that you can get kind of for free. And so some folks I have seen do an entry level and then jump into like a postdoc degree or a postgrad degree. So yeah. I think that's where, yes, there's an internship and a grad GA are kind of the same. And then you have your full-time like assistant director coordinator level. Um, Jessica, what do you think on this? I think it, for, it depends on you. I think those two situations have a lot of variables. Um, depending on if you do a GA position, you might get, and also depends on where it is, you might get your school paid for, you still might have paid room and board and bills. Assistant director job, depending on where it is, you still make you still might make zero dollars. So I think it also depends on yeah. your situation and what um, your, like your personal situation is set up yeah. to. Um, it's kind of like the question of, do I need a master's or not? So I think that's what this question that is. It depends on the person and your circumstances um, because you can say, I want to go for a full-time job, but if you don't get a full-time job, you're going to have to figure something else out. And so you might have a plan B or plan A. I don't think there's one solid answer. I think they're both separate processes and I think it's going to have to be a personal choice for yourself. I, I agree with that. Um, for context, I don't have any kind of postgraduate education, but I've spoken at 
a ton of grad schools. I was on the Ohio University sports grad, like alumni or not alumni, but like advisory board. Um, and I don't think I would go back at, at this point. Um, and I feel like, again, I don't, I don't have it, but I've talked and lectured at these places, right? <laughs> so I, wh whatever that says about, about the grad programs themselves, that they're letting this schmuck go out in there and do it. Um, I, my default in my personal situation, I would have gone and said, let's go get a first time, a, a, like a job and some experience first. Because to me, it's like grad, a, a graduate, something graduate education is a commitment and financially, emotionally, physically, you might have to move, right? Like to me, I'm like, wouldn't you want to go test to see if you really want to go do this while getting paid before you go commit to something like that? Mm -hmm. Um, that's my personal take. But again, this is a personal choice. I think that you, you kind of have to make. Yeah. And, you know, David's told all the stories tonight, but on this, I'm actually going to tell a story about this and like why I say it's a personal choice coming out of undergrad. I was applying for jobs, just applying, applying, rejection, rejection, rejection. Um, and I actually moved up to the South suburbs here in Chicago with my aunt. And my aunt was like, Hey, you can't live here without either going to school or <laughs> getting a job. And I wasn't getting any, one, I wasn't getting any, any interviews in the industry or anything like that. So I had to fall back and I actually, I never wanted to go to grad school, but I actually slid into going to grad school um, because that I wasn't getting a full-time job. And I was like, well, I guess I'll go get a, another degree. And for me, actually, I learned the most in my grad program because when I was in school, I was a sport administration major. So we did theory, book work. Yeah. But in grad school, it's sports media. So I learned InDesign, Photoshop, video editing. And those are the actual skills I actually use today in my current position. Um, but if I would have got a full time job, would I have gone to grad school? I'm going to go with no because it was school. Um, so I think it just depends. It depends on variables and situations. And at some point you'll have to make a decision on which way to go. Um, sometimes by choice, sometimes by horse choice. <laughs> so it can go either way. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, one piece of advice I was given when trying to decide about my master's was look at this, the biographies that of people that are in positions that you want to be in and see how they got there, which is harder at the beginning. Cause if you look at an athletic director, they don't talk too much about their internships, but looking at people at different levels and seeing how they got there. Um, but one final question for each of you, what is the best advice you were giving given as it relates to professional development? I will go. I will go with professional development is every day. I think a lot of times in the industry, people, you know, you talk about conventions and this conference, but you can actually have professional development every single day. If you're in the office and let's say your supervisor makes a budget decision and you're sitting back to yourself asking like, why did they make that choice? And you meet with them every day or you said to me, Ask them, be like, well, why was that decision made and how did you go through that thought process? Because one, that gives you information on how budgeting and thinking and that problem solving happens. And it's free. Because a lot of people that you worked for and around you, all you have to do is ask and they'll talk to you. Most of the time, if it's a subject about what we do, we're going to talk forever. And like, so you can learn from that. And you can learn from different departments if you're a marketing person and we're at an event and you have to get facilities approval, ask them questions like, why? What's the thought process behind that? Why do we need to actually get a contract signed for this? Why do we actually have to sign waivers for our marketing promotions? Like talk to your risk management. Why is that there? Like you can literally get professional development every single day. And that's something that I actually was reminded of recently. Um, because a lot of times we talk about conventions and conferences, you, you're like, ah, my department's not going to send me here. But you literally have, depending on how big or small, 20 to 100 plus people in your department where you can literally ask questions every day 
about why different decisions were made. Someday they can tell you, sometimes they might not, but you still have to ask the question and that will gain you knowledge of kind of how, as you get to different positions, what you have to consider. Um, you can't just always be like, oh, I think that's a great decision. And you're like, why? That makes no sense. And ask, talk to them, talk to your supervisor if you have a weekly or monthly set meeting and just make a list of like different things that you saw or why they said this or why they said that and, or how did this happen? How did this capital project come about? Like, why do we have to do a community sur survey with the community because we wanna build this? So asking those questions will, one, open kind of your eyes outside of what you do every single day because the athletic department works together in combination um, and you can learn those things and they will become very helpful um, <laughs> when you're trying to make decisions yourself or figure out how can we make this happen? Um, be like, oh, I know compliance is gonna ask me this question. So I need to have an answer for this and check those boxes so it's a little bit minimal and you start to see the athletic department as a whole. But I'd say the best thing advice is professional development is every day. Uh, 100% agree with that. Um, I guess my, my words of wisdom here would be uh, invest in and encourage your curiosity. So when it comes to personal or professional development being every day, like that is a hundred percent, I would say, let your curiosity run wild. I have learned, especially right now. I mean, the, the rate of change that is happening, I mean, especially in, in the marketing space right now, it literally, there is not 24 hours that goes by right now, especially in the AI space where things are not like drastically changing. And so if you're not staying curious, like this is, this is the, the AI mantra, which is like, AI is not going to replace you, but somebody using AI will. And it's to the point of like, if you're not keeping up and constantly teaching yourself new skills, you will get passed by people that are. And you won't get that next job opportunity because somebody else will beat you because they were more curious than you were. And so for me, it's like one, one of my, I think, super skills, one of them is not time management or organization. I'll throw that out there. Um, but one of my like really big super skills is being able to take disparate ideas and connect them together. And a lot of that is because of my curiosity. I like genuinely know a lot about a lot of different topics. And so when we get up in front of a crowd or we're working on a situation with an athletic department or a pro team trying to solve a problem, I can quickly go, well, I remember this razor blade company that had a similar situation and here's how they approached it. What if we took the core principle from what they were doing there and applied it here from to a ticket sales perspective and it works. And it's not like anybody and nobody else in the industry has had that idea we just borrowed it from somewhere else, right? Because I let my curiosity go wild. And I clicked down that case study about the razor blade company. And I learned about it. I didn't, I was not working with any kind of retail razor blade companies on that kind of stuff. But I thought maybe there's something in here that I can learn from and apply to my every day. So I would encourage your curiosity to go wild. And then I would invest in it as well. If you're not, if you know, you're not going to be, you're, your school or your team is not going to send you to that conference, pay for the flight yourself, go bum with a coworker in their hotel room, especially like NACTA, like NACTA, I would say, I would argue benefits the the members, like the individual members oftentimes more than it does the institutions, right? And the institutions get better because the individuals are getting better that are working there, right? It's not like the school inherently is getting better by, the school is not in attendance. It's the people from the school that are in attendance, right? So be one of those people. And if you can't, if you can't get it, if you can't get them to pay for it, like try to save up for it and see if you can fly there. If you can't afford a lanyard, just sit in the lobby and meet with people, right? Like ideally you're getting paid for and you're going, and that's the move. And you want to be in all those sessions, but just being there is better than not. And there, when I started my own company, the first couple of years, we did not have a lot of cash flow to pay big tickets for going to NACTA, but I was not missing that. So I flew down to Orlando. My parents stayed, let me stay with them. And I would just stay up late at the bar, like come home, like meeting people, hanging out with people, like all lobby team right here. Um, and, and then I'd go crash with my parents and I paid for my own plane flights. 
and Chris Green and 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 uh, Bob Vecchioni and everybody would yell at me because I I have good relationship with them. They'd be like, "You're you don't have a lanyard on again," and I'm like, "Next year, next year," and this year I will have a lanyard. Um, but just you gotta you gotta go in and you gotta want it yourself, and you gotta invest time, resources, sometimes financially. That is the best kind of investment you can make is in your own professional development. That's the best investment you'll make. If you want another soundbite for a clip, um, like you talk, like they would talk about hustle and grind. I mean, at the end of the day, it takes what it takes. Yes, that's right. Awesome. Well, thank you both, David and Jess, for joining us. Thank you, Steph, for helping moderate. We really appreciate it. Some great advice. Professional development is every day. Stay curious, set your goals. That's so important. Send that text, pop in your head, rooting for you. That was great. Crushing it. We love it. Um, do not make transactional relationships. Personal bonds are super important. And those soft touches on social, saw articles, such great advice. We really, really appreciate it. Real quick, before we wrap up, just a reminder, um, David had a great plug, NACMA convention, June 14th, through, or excuse me, the 11th through the 14th in Orlando. So would love to have you. Our final NACMA Academy for the year, crazy, we're already here, Monday, May 22nd. Topic is NACMA 101. So that will be focused for those who are attending NACMA. And lastly, surveys will go out on NACMA Academy. So please assist us in making this program better next year. Would love any feedback. So thank you. Have a great night. Good luck with everything. And we'll talk soon. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you.